Isometric art defies realistic perspective in the sense that it does not use a vanishing point system. Instead, all lines fall into a 30 degree grid. One reason we do this is because once you've created an object, it'll look exactly the same anywhere you place it. Okay, let's kick off this tutorial. We begin by making an isometric grid in Illustrator. There are many ways to do this, but I prefer using the rectangular grid tool. If you don't see your rectangular grid tool in the toolbar, you can find it down here. With it selected, click once anywhere on your artboard. The options window will pop up. The number of pixels is your choice, but we do want the width and height to be the same, as well as the horizontal and vertical dividers. You can ignore this part. Click OK. Here's our grid. Now we need to change it to the isometric layout. I like to do this with my transform panel. Grab that from the Windows dropdown. In the height field, type 86.602%. Don't forget that percent sign. Then press Enter. Now we shear and rotate, and the order is important. Shear first, 30 degrees, then rotate minus 30 degrees. There's our ISO grid. I'll use the align tools to center it on the artboard. I'm now holding down my shift key to maintain its proportion as I scale up to cover the whole artboard. If you want to trim the excess, using the shape tool, draw a rectangle over the artboard, then select both the rectangle and artboard. Go to Object Dropdown, then Clipping Mask, then Make. If you want, you can change the color or opacity to your liking. Then, in your Layers panel, I recommend labeling it and locking it. Now you can add a new layer to begin your isometric art. Let's start by creating with the Pen tool. In my Properties panel, I like to draw with my Fill set to None and my Stroke set to 3 pixels. Be sure to click on the word Stroke and choose the Align Stroke to Inside option. Now let's draw our first shape with the pen tool, following the grid lines we created. Under your drop down view options, you may want to check your snap to pixel option. Let's draw the side shapes next. We are drawing complete shapes because we will add color in a moment. I like to check my layers from time to time. Looks accurate. I have drawn five shapes so far, a bottom and four sides. Select all of the shapes and let's change the stroke to none and add any fill color. This will make sense, stay with me. Open your color guide panel. Click on this arrow for harmony rules. I love this illustrator feature. Choose monochromatic and then holding down the shift key, select three shades that you like. Then click here on Save Color Group to Swatches panel. Open your Swatches panel and you will see your new saved colors. I will change my fills now in this manner to create the 3D illusion. Adding these colors reminds me that I want a top shape, so I will draw that now. I have a bottom shape that isn't visible, but if you use this box as a template to copy and paste from, you may find the bottom shape handy. If you've been looking into isometrics, you may have heard of the SSR method. It stands for Scale, Shear, Rotate. We actually use this method to create our grid. Let's use our shape tools. Select the rectangle tool and hide your grid for now. Then in the properties panel, I'll select a three pixel stroke and be sure to align my stroke to the inside like we did before. Holding down the shift key, I will draw a perfect square for this example. Copy and paste that twice so that we have our top and sides ready to transform. Select one of the squares and open your transform panel. Type 86.602% in the height field. That's our scale. This should look familiar. Then we'll shear 30 degrees and rotate 30 degrees. We just built the right side with the SSR method. Select the next square. This time I will use the scale tool because it's faster. The keyboard shortcut S and enter gets us to this option window. In the vertical field, type 86.602% and OK. Then I will use the transform panel to shear and rotate. For the left side, I need minus 30 degrees for both. For that last square, let's SSR again. Keyboard S and Enter. Our options window remembers the vertical percentage from before, which is why I like this tool. Turn the grid back on and check that the angles are lining up. They should be. Next, 
you are going to love me when I show you this isometric shortcut. We can speed up the SSR method by utilizing our actions panel. Let's draw three identical squares again. Your actions panel is available from your window dropdown. Click on the plus icon to create a new action. Let's name it ISO right and click record. Now let's do that scale shear rotate for our right side. Scale, then shear 30 and rotate 30. Then go back to the actions panel and click stop. Stopping is important and easy to forget. Next, let's record our ISO left. Scale and then shear minus 30 and rotate minus 30. Click stop. Then record our ISO top action with a 30 degree shear and minus 30 degree rotate. It's super easy to now utilize our recorded actions. First, take a look at what we created. Your actions should look like this opened up. To demonstrate, I'll quickly create three identical squares, select a square, and then inside my actions panel, I will select ISO right and then click the play icon. Then with the next square, ISO left and play. With the last square, ISO top and play. Let's go ahead and add color. I'll choose a blue and use the same method as earlier with my color guide and swatches panel. The last method I will demonstrate is using a 3D feature. Let's draw a square and open up our 3D and materials panel. I'll select extrude and then play with a depth slider. And then down here under presets, I'll choose an isometric view. You can go back anytime and change the depth as well as the ISO view. This is super fast and fun, but there is of course a sacrifice in control and customization. Let's do this again, but this time with a circle shape. Sure, we sacrifice control, but you can probably start to see that curvy shapes are so much faster with the 3D panel. The instant coloring and gradients are pretty great too. I'll show one last example by selecting the top anchor points of this rectangle and pulling these down to create a rounded top that could be a piece of furniture or a window or maybe an archway. I think it's important to understand and use all three methods as they all have their strengths. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking it with a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to be sure to catch my latest tutorials. Also, I have included useful links in the description. Thank you for watching until the end.